Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Benovich here. We got a lot to talk about. Tropical Storm Debbie is going to be a big, big problem for the Carolinas, and it's all about flooding. Um, there's a lot of areas that will be impacted. Please, when you see this, I'll explain as much as I can. There's not one area of the Carolinas that's out of the woods. Like a lot of folks will watch this and go, oh, it looks like it's going to miss us. Do not say that. If you say that, you would be wrong, okay? There's areas that are going to get clobbered. The problem is we don't know how extensive or which areas will be clobbered the most, but everybody will be impacted in some way by this. So if you live in North or South Carolina, doesn't matter where, there's a chance you'll be impacted. So when people ask, what about my time? What about my time? You're all gonna be impacted. It's just levels or degrees of impact. So let's get right to it. Why is it such a big problem? Well, a couple things. Tropical systems in general, we always worry about. It's not that this is gonna be a super strong system. Could it become a minimal hurricane? Yes, 100% chance that could happen as it hits Florida. The problem for us is it stalls and the moisture it brings. So here's the current forecast track. So over the next couple of days, really today through Tuesday, it makes landfall, you know, big surge in Florida. This is an area that has a lot of storm surge anyway. So Florida, storm surge, hurricane force winds at the coast, maybe even tropical storm force winds inland, all the threats you see with hurricanes. But as it moves up towards Georgia and South Carolina, something happens, it stalls. And so what happens when it stalls it can dump rain for days, not hours, days. Now you also notice we've got this stationary front. There's a real good chance that this front, maybe not a strong front, is gonna be in the area. So as moisture pivots in around the counterclockwise flow, it's gonna interact with this front and produce a lot of rain. That's why even in Charlotte West, I can't rule out the fact that there could, not, there could be some serious flooding there, especially later this week. Now, if you're in the low country or um, areas of South Carolina in the in the North Carolina coast, the biggest concern here is everyone's like, there's rain. But remember, there is a little bit of storm surge. It won't be great surge. And you're not talking like five, six feet, but even two to three, four feet of storm surge while it's pouring inland, that water wants to flow out through the rivers and through the intercoastal. But the surge is coming in and keeping it from doing that, even if it's a small surge. So what happens is that backs up the water even more and you get tons of flooding along the coast. It's a double whammy. Uh, so every high tide comes up, but there's never a low tide. And then the next tide comes up and it's even higher. And the whole time that the tide is coming up, it's blocking the mouth of the rivers and outlets for this water, which is trying to flow off the land back into the ocean. So this is when you get your biggest, most extreme rainfall events, because there's nowhere for the water to go. Now, what's gonna happen is that update will be coming out is around Tuesday into Monday, I'm really Tuesday into Wednesday. I think this is one thing stalls near Savannah, Charleston. So the highest impacts I can, I'm assured are going to happen down in this area. But as the, as the system tracks up, it could track there. It could track closer to Charlotte. It could track this way. There's big uncertainty up in here about the flood risk as it moves in that area. So why is it going to stall? It's pretty straightforward. Actually, the steering currents, which is a big high pressure system over Bermuda. It's too far away. It's not really strong enough to push it. So most of the most of the flow is here. We've got a heat dome over the western US. It's pretty far away. It's not really steering it much. And the jet stream, which you know, if you get a trough to pick it up would be great. The problem is the jet stream is really up here. So it's kind of caught in no man's land between all these gears. Like imagine these are gears and you got like a belt and the belt needs to catch one of these gears. Well, it's in between all three of these and nothing really catches it. So what does it do? It meanders around and that meandering around causes some big time problems. So let's start looking at some of the rainfall amounts. Again, these will change. That's why I say stay weather aware all week because potentially um, the five day rainfall forecast could be off the charts. Now you see the areas, folks, that's 20 to 30 inches, okay? And you see even to Charlotte, that's four to six inches with most of our area seeing at least two to four. Now that's a tremendous amount of rain. So when you look at the extreme rainfall outlook, you could see extreme. I mean, that's the, that's the purple and all that red. There's a good chance this could get pushed up into parts of the Piedmont. So that's why I said, you know, even though people here are gonna see this and go, I, I can hear it right now. Looks like it's gonna miss this, Brad. Look, no, please do not say that. Do not say that because we don't know yet. And I'm going to show you why we don't fully know that yet. This map is, I'm going to show you a couple different maps. This is the seven-day rainfall forecast. 
You don't normally see these kinds of purples on here, right? You've got, uh, I think the max is 27.49 inches of rain, somewhere around Charleston, Savannah. Um, I'm going to zoom in even closer. We're just going to do the Carolinas here. You see in Charlotte, five inches. That's a big deal in Charlotte, guys. I hate to tell you that. Um, if we get five inches of Charlotte, we're going to get flooding, okay? Now, the mountains, a little bit less. But you notice some of the purple showing up up here because what, what this is trying to indicate, and I'm going to go seven days out. Here's day one. Here's day two. We'll, we'll go hour by hour to kind of show you how this unfolds. So we go through Tuesday. So Monday, Tuesday, probably not too bad for most of our area. But Tuesday into Wednesday is when South Carolina starts seeing a ramp up. And really, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, when things get pretty bad. And then for our area, Charlotte area, Raleigh West, it's really going to be Thursday into the weekend that the rain chances ramp up. So the worst weather, probably Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe even Sunday. This is next Sunday morning. And the reason I say that is because whatever the remnant low is, wherever's left of it, it's going to stall down here. It's eventually going to move up here. And because that stalled front is somewhere in here, you're going to see huge amounts here. And I think even back here, it's not out of the woods. So this is why I don't want you guys to just look at this and say, it's going to miss us. With a slow moving stalled system, you can't rule anything out. Too many people confuse precision and accuracy. I can accurately tell you right now, somebody or probably a lot of somebody's in this area is going to see extreme flooding that is accurate right i can't precisely tell you it's going to be right here right here right here if i try to be too precise by just circling the, those three areas and then the flooding happens here here and here that's not accurate but if i circle the whole area that's very accurate does that make sense that's why i said you know don't don't say just oh it's going to miss us here because this thing only has to slide west 50 miles or slide east 50 miles to change everything. So because of the slow movement and the stalled nature, it makes the forecast uncertain for who's gonna see the worst, but we are very certain somebody's gonna get a ton of rain. And right now the highest confidence is in these areas, basically shaded in purple. So if I were to take, I would take a highway, what's this 81, right? That comes down to like Withville to 77 to 85, I would say that's our highest confidence. There's a little bit more question here, but the reason I never write off the mountains, if we get an upslope flow at any point, then it's game on for flooding there. So the best thing I could tell you is everybody in the Carolinas stay weather aware. The potential for this to be a huge flood event is certainly there. Um, last but not least, I'm gonna drag in my, my other map here real quickly, because I like to show you that the forecast track, this is the, the, the official track takes it you know, right there, but you see the red, that's the consensus track. So there's still a chance that this is a tropical depression move somewhere between Charlotte and Raleigh. And that means that's why the Piedmont in the central part of North Carolina still has a high flash flood risk. So that's why you can't rule anything out right now. So let's take one last look there. There it is. This is a problem because of all the moisture coming in, but also the stalled front does not help the situation. So that's the thing I think people get off, you know, will start, you know, kind of missing. They're going to focus on this track, which remember, that's just the center. It doesn't tell you where the rain is. They're going to forget that there's a, a stalled front here and counterclockwise flow produces all this moisture and that moisture interacts with the front and you see heavy rain well ahead of it. We've seen this before. Think of Hurricane Florence. Think of Hurricane Joaquin, which never made landfall in anywhere near. Joaquin was way out here, okay? But we had a stalled front back here. And Joaquin was able to funnel moisture all the way back into the Midlands of South Carolina and cause epic flooding. So remember, don't focus on where the center of Debbie is. Focus on where the impacts are. And in this case, the impact is rain, and it's going to be just about everywhere. Of course, I will post updates. Sorry this is long, but there's a lot to talk about. And if you're in the low country of South Carolina, please prepare now for flash flooding and storm surge and all kinds of flooding. That's a flood prone area already. And I know a lot of people go, it floods all the time. Not this kind of flooding, <laughs> 30 inches, that's historic, okay? So make sure you're ready in the low country of South Carolina and everybody else be ready for flooding. Clean storm drains out, make sure your gutters and downspouts are cleared. If you have standing water parts in your yard, make sure everything can flow away from the house. Anything that you can help to do today, tomorrow and Tuesday before it really pours, it's time to do it.